Do you have one of those little carts that you put your liquor on? That takes up a lot of room. Check out this liquor cabinet. Yeah. Well, takes up no room. Check out this video and it'll go step by step how we installed these barn door slides. I get an email from Bill and said, hey, look what I did with the Easy Stud Rack. Check this picture out. It's a liquor cabinet that's on a barn door slide. I'm like, what an awesome idea. As a matter of fact, let's try that. Let's show everybody how easy it is to create that. What if I told you, you take advantage of this wall. Create that extra storage that you need. With the Easy Stud Rack storage system, you've got tons of different ways you could take advantage of that wall. Check out this video and you can see hidden storage behind two mirrors in a bathroom. You can create hidden storage, old decorative shutters like you can see in this video. The beauty about the Easy Stud Rack storage system is you can create storage on any wall. Stay with me as we attach these decorative doors with some barn door slides. Mm. When we first started this, there was a lot of questions. <laughs> When I say there's a lot of questions, in my head there's a lot of questions. Is it gonna fit in this wall? Is it gonna be centered? First step is you take a stud finder, you find where your studs are. Luckily in this room is pretty much centered. Second step is, well you gotta look for your doors. Well how high do you want your doors? Barn door slides, you know, what, what's available? What can we get? Click on the links below and you'll see where we order these barn door slides. These particular doors we found at Hobby Lobby. Now what was the criteria? We took a tape measure, let me grab a tape measure here. Did a little research on barn door slides. You need eight to 10 inches from the top. So we measured eight to 10 inches, measured all the way down to the ground, it's 96 inch ceiling. So we concluded that our door needed to be around 80 inches, max. That gives it plenty of clearance on the top, a little clearance on the bottom. What are the items that we check for on a wall before you start notching it out? One, see if it's an exterior wall. If it's an exterior wall, stay away from it. It's got insulation there and you don't want to mess with it. Two, look for electrical outlets. I see one there, I see one there, and I walk around the other side and I don't see anything. So on the other side of this wall, it seems to be clear, no obstacles. Upstairs is a closet, so there's not gonna be any pipes that I'm concerned about that I know of. We took a stud finder and we determined that this little area right here is where our studs are located. So we can have an area here and an area here to notch out. So when we measured it, we found out we got about 30 inches that we we're gonna have to cover. So instead of doing one big door that slides, we decided to go with two. As far as location wise, it can go anywhere here. We decided that we're gonna make it about right here. So attaching the barn door hardware, it's not rocket science, it's easy. It's got this guy little wheel that rolls and attaches to your door here. We're gonna have one that attaches here, one that attaches here. First step is we gotta drill holes. So I just went in and found a 5 6 inch drill bit that's gonna work for these. 5 8 drill bit. We put our little guides up here just like this. Do I wanna measure? I probably ought to measure. That way we do it in the same spot on both sides. So we'll just measure say about one inch from the end of this. Just come in here and screw it in. When I'm drilling a hole in wood, sometimes it's easier to just go in a little bit, come out, clear the shavings out. Then we go in. Sometimes I feel like it gets clogged up in there and it's harder to drill in. We'll go in and put the hardware that came with it. If I was to do it, I would do it this way. Go like that. Okay, there's one in. This other one's kind of close to the top, but it'll work. We'll measure the one inch. There we go. One barn door slide in. We're just going to repeat for the rest of them. Now, if you want a helpful tip on how to keep the back from splintering out, See how it splinters out? You can put a piece of board on there and sandwich it in there pretty tight while you're screwing it. It'll keep that from chipping out. Since it's not gonna be seen, I don't worry about it. It's not my door anyway. Oh, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> now we got the rollers hung. Some of the items that I recommend. One is your drill driver with the little hammer drill. A little package of uh, sockets you can attach to this guy. I have links to all this where you can buy them. A level, 
So this is where we want the height of the door to be. This isn't a spaceship we're building, so it doesn't have to be exact. I would say that rail needs to be approximately two and three quarter inches from this line, the top of the rail. If I go and measure two and three quarter, right about there, the top of the rail will go right there. Now we get the handy dandy stud finder and we find us a stud. There's a stud right here where this nail is where they hung a picture in before. Let's see how many holes are in this thing. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So we're just gonna come in here. We know where the stud's at. That was easy. If these studs are spaced right, this next hole should be right at 16 inches. Yep. And another one right here. Yep. When it comes to using a stud finder, I always find it easier to push it, hold it, the beat, and pull towards you. When you pull it towards you, it's nice and smooth. Get your handy dandy level. This level here, I'll have a link. It's got a magnet on it, so it comes in handy. Right there. Now, when it comes to these, they got a lot of power. What I would do is I would recommend go in and then just manually with this wrench, do a final tighten. Yeah, that's really tight. Okay, now we go to the next one. Guys, just go up here like this. Oh, boom! There we go. All right, this is exciting. These little guys right here came with an Allen wrench. They're just a stop that slides in here. Kind of like this. Then when this door opens up, boom! It stops. So we can adjust this anywhere we want to get the doors to open up. We probably just need them to open up to right there. There's one. Look at that. Boom. We just do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Mmm. Beautiful. So you see how easy it is to hang these things? Uh-oh. 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 Houston, we have a problem. So we got... The barn door slides and they came with this little thing to keep the door away from the wall. So there's this little hump right here and this thing won't allow it to go past that little hump. Okay, so we got this, I think it's a 561 Dremel multi-purpose bit and we got this guide. I got the guide set. For this particular door, I went out and down as far as I could go. Kind of gave it an eye, eyeballed it. And, it's okay, I might have to make two passes to get the thickness of this guy. This thing's got different settings where we can unscrew this guy and move it in and out. I just did it at a, for first pass to try it out, I did it at a quarter setting, quarter depth. I got it set at 25, which is I believe 2500 RPM. And we're just gonna go in here and see how well it cuts. First impression with the cut. I come in here and oh yeah, maybe it's just gonna take one pass. Here we go. What I'm doing is, is I'm pushing down on it with my thumb, my right thumb, of course holding it with this hand. And as I'm going through, I'm kind of using this little ledge right here to kind of pull, pull, push down and pull. All right, so this thing's adjustable. And I do want it away from the wall, about an inch. So, let's just see how well it slides in here. It seems to be a little tighter than I want it. We'll go through and do another pass. If you notice, I just went back and forth, back and forth, and it seemed to be cleaning it up a lot better. 
tail I want him to hang up a little bit right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go deeper, turn this little setting right here, and go as deep as it'll go. Here we go. Mmm, this thing loosened up. So I ended up cutting a little further down. Mm, you gotta keep an eye out for that. Gotta tighten this guy down. FYI, the way the blade turns, it's a lot easier. You just gotta experiment to go in this direction versus this direction. Okay, that came out good. Not exactly in the center, but it's gonna have to do. This, this right here will bolt to your wall and your don't barn door will just slide like this. Okay, here we go on the second one. Now, I went ahead and left it at the last setting where we had it on the other one. And maybe we're trying to take too much out of it at a time. So I better go back to our original plan. Bring the setting out. I notice there's a lot of stuff that gets caught in there. So let's just go get all that stuff. One tip, take your time. I'm trying to rush this thing way too much. The bit kind of tends to slip a little bit. It's chewing it all up. I don't like the way it looks, so hopefully it doesn't affect the slides. Cleaned up a lot better than I thought it would. Slide really good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach, we've already cut a little notch right here in our wood. See how this guy just swings around like this? So it's got plenty of playroom. And with these guys, see where they can go in and out. I'm gonna push it in all the way and see how it fits. I know there's a stud here, and when this door opens up, it stops right there. So it's still gonna hang on the, this little metal piece. And that way when it closes, it's hidden. If I move it over anymore, then you won't be able to see it. I can go all the way up, but I'm gonna kind of go halfway in this slot. And we're just gonna use a screw. So I'm just eyeballing it. About right there. Just like that. Now the next step is notch out the sheetrock. This is gonna be easy. I'm just taking a little pencil right here and just hold it. Look at that. I'm marking a line across. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. That's as high as I want it to go, and I just mark a line across. I do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put the pencil right here like this. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Check out the link in the description. It's called the zip bit and a Dremel tool. And I set the Dremel tool to about 25 RPM. And we're just gonna poke a hole in there and follow it easily, notching out this sheetrock. Here we go. It's always good to put your vacuum cleaner on this thing to keep the minimize the dust. Well, there's always a surprise when you're cutting out sheetrock. So, looks like we got electricity going across. And we got this guy. Why do they have these going across there? I don't know. But I will do a little research and find out. So it's going across all the way up. I contacted a few of my friends and I asked them, about this little uh, piece of wood here, a cross member. Without getting into all the details, we concluded that I can remove it. Always consult somebody before removing cross bracing or anything like that. So I'm just gonna use this guy, Rockler with a little saw blade thingy on the end. Makes it real easy.
I went in and spackled this. Just a little crack between the sheetrock pieces. We just do a little clean up sand and then we're going to paint before we install the easy stud racks. This wire here, I was told it's just a speaker wire. It's no longer used. So we're going to cut it. As far as the spackling compound, I always like buying it in a tube. It's a little harder to squeeze out, but you know what? You hang this up and you don't have to worry about it drying out. What I like about this one is it's pink until it dries and it turns white. Now the next step is to go in and just measure the width of the studs between the studs. It is 13 and 7 eighths. And on this side, it's 14 and a quarter. The distance between these two are different. So the best thing to do is to try to find a happy medium. So let's just do a first cut of piece of wood is 14 inches minus a quarter inch. Let me tell you why. The easy stud rack is about an eighth inch thick right here at this location. So when we put it on there, it's gonna take up that much space. So subtract a quarter inch. The piece of wood I cut out worked perfect. Let me go cut it and we'll be right back. I wasn't gonna show you me painting, but I wanted to point out, check this out. This little corner thing works perfect for this. All I'm worried about is painting the corners so I can go ahead and install the easy stud rack, but check that out. Look at that. Just go up and down, look at that. Wow, so much easier. So as you can see in the other videos, I always like to go in and put a little support guy down here. That just keeps this bottom shelf to rest right here just like this. And then from there, I will start the easy stud racks. So I always recommend drilling little pilot holes like this. A couple of them. Just go in like this. Having that pre-drilled hole really helps. Now, once you put this next one in, you want to make sure that your shelf is pretty level. There we go. If you're wondering what kind of screws, these are called fine thread drywall screws. They're an inch and a quarter. I'll have a link down in the description. Now this is a one by four. Home Depot has one by fives. So they'll stick out about a half an inch further out. As you can see here, I'm lining up to the edge. I'm pushing down on this board, but not too tight. I still want to be able to take this board out. That way we'll have a little hidden compartment underneath. Find the center of the hole. There we go. Just kind of lining up the edge here. Find the center. When I say find the center, I find the center of the hole. You do one on each end, and then you skip to one, two, and then do the next one. From the bottom, skip to one, two, and do the next one. I like the fact that you can remove this guy and you can have a little hidden compartment down there if you want. We'll do the same thing on the other side. There's no point in showing you all the details. We'll do it real quick. So I know what you're thinking. How am I going to cut this little piece to fit around the electrical cord? I just went in, I just measured it out. I got these guys. It's got a little utility blade right here. I love these things. And then I'll take a regular just a knife. Just do a nice little slice right here, a little deep, just to break that edge and then just snap it off. Look at that. That's how easy it works. And I kind of just put it up there and, and measured it to where it would fit. There's a lot of movement flexibility there. So I got it to where it would just fit right in between the two boards. So then we go in there and just attach it like all the others. What I got here is I got to trim this guy right along this edge. Why? So when I put it up here, that board will be able to fit right in there. So I have two options. I can take that saw, miter saw, and try to cut it, which is gonna be a little dangerous. Or I use this guy with this blade. It'll just follow right along there. 
It's a great handy tool to have. A lot easier and safer than trying to use a miter saw. I like to cut slow, kind of melts it. It's hot. <laughs> Be careful because it's hot. Now check it out. That goes up there like that. It's just one little piece. And that guy goes in just like that. You might not be able to see what I'm doing. Basically what I'm doing is I'm using this as a spacer so everything fits right above that little plastic. So this guy goes in here like this and all I'm doing is putting a spacer in here. So whenever the shelf goes in here, I know the shelf didn't fit, but there you go. Kind of just snugs right in there. Here comes the fun part. At least I think it's the fun part where you start stacking everything. You could use it for medicine cabinets. You could use it for a small little pantry if you don't have a lot of room. You can use it for, in this particular case, it's going to be used for liquor. You get to go in there with the easy stud rack storage system. Everything is adjustable. Shelves go in, they adjust up and down. You can shift them around as your stuff changes. You just change your shelves. So we just got a bunch of different liquor type stuff. I'm just putting it up on the shelf. This wiring is here. Now, if you want to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell icon, I will be moving this wire out of the way where it's not visible. I had to talk to a couple little friends because I'm an electrician on how we could do it. So I'm going to learn as well as you're going to learn how it's all done to do it per code. So as of right now, I am just going to put a shelf right above the wire. We put these little strips of lighting. We really didn't tape them down. We just temporarily taped them up until I get that wiring moved. And then once it's all said and done, then we're going to finalize that part. I'm not concerned about how it's going to go in. I'm just filling up space. Hopefully everything fits. If it doesn't, then we'll figure something else out. We can always notch out some more. As your items change, shelves are easily adjustable. Got barn door slides, and just close on up. Just like that. Voila! See how do you use... I can hear the wall now telling me, please use me, use me, take advantage of me. And that's what we're gonna do. I don't know how to, I don't know how to use this remote control. Auto, here we go.